Okay, so the first one we're going to review is Baccarat, which is playing at the film festival uh, right at the start of March, so kind of about halfway through the festival. So it's coming out a little bit later in March. Uh, I think it's coming to some theatres, but mainly it will be available on Mubi, who are, of course, the UK distributor for this. So the feature is uh, set in Brazil, and basically we open with uh, our main character, or at least our main character for the opening stretch, Teresa, coming back to her hometown uh, which is a small village essentially um in eastern brazil and there's a little bit of a dispute going on with the local authorities about access to water uh, when we see her she's coming into town in in the cab of a water tanker and basically it, the, the town isn't in the best state um and there seems to be some slightly weird goings on uh, which of course increased throughout the first half of the film it's going to be a very hard film for us to talk about without spoilers. We're going to do our best uh, to try and avoid them. Now, I've not seen any of the director's other work, um, but as I understand it, this is maybe a slight departure from what he has done before. But basically, we then find ourselves in town and these odd happenings increase and within the opening stretches of the film we've already got a scenario whereby you can now no longer find the town on a map for instance or at least not a digital map the old school maps of it but you can't find it in satellite imagery or anything like that and you know then we end up with two supposed tourists coming into town who then behave a little bit weirdly i'll leave it there um purely because there is a lot to unpack in this film mark it Maybe if you come in first and just give us your general impression of the film and what you would want somebody to know going in, because we've kind of got to balance what we say with what we don't say here about this film. I would just want to say I love this movie so much. Um, Cleber Mendonca, I feel, is one of my probably. I mean, he's only got three features to date. This being one of them, and he's already emerging as one of my favorite directors. Um, Neighboring Sounds, his film from 2012, as a sort of fantastic ensemble of a. A, a small neighbor, a small street sm suburb in Recife in Brazil. And his most recent film before this is an exquisite piece of work called Aquarius, which I would recommend it is on um, Netflix UK if you're interested. It stars Sonia Braga, uh, who is also in this film. She plays a character called Domingus, who is the, um, who's the rather uh, invective doctor um, with a bit of a temper. Uh, I would, uh, reasons for loving this are just are so varied because it's such a varied movie. Um, when you begin, um, the there are some very straightforward adumbrations that we need to take into account as they're driving this water cooler through the, um, as uh, as Jim mentioned, the eastern Brazilian Sertão, the the outback, the back country. Um, there are some strewn coffins on the road, which. I don't know, that's, that's not always the most cheery sign. Um, before that, we see a dead body on the road too. And when they make it to the village, the first one of the first things that happens is that her uh, Teresa, played by um, Barbara Collen, uh, her suitcase is taken from her um, and passed around a crowd of people in a very crowded house in just a really strange and beautiful um, w uh, kind of moving way. You don't quite understand why it's moving yet. Her suitcase is opened up and some important uh, contents are taken out and distributed among the among the inhabitants. Um, we realize that she's coming back to the house for a week for her grandmother, uh, who is an important figure in the town. And what emerges from that first setup and then all throughout the film is just a really deeply beautiful sense of communitarian ethos, a communitarian spirit. There's a moment later on in the film, which I think demonstrates that perfectly, which is the um, uh, the son of the matriarch, the son of... Um, I think it's uh, I think it's actually Teresa's father um, speaks to somebody who's uh, asking why they don't use the church as much anymore, and his answer is quite simple. He says, uh, "If uh, what makes you happy makes us happy," and that's an ethos which runs through the entirety of the film uh, when it's concerned with the village. It's a very varied and diverse community that they have. There are sex workers work there, just um, you know, uninhibitedly. Um, there's there are trans characters. Nobody seems to have much in the way of beef that they can't just squash immediately with a, a wee conversation. Um, yeah, I think this is a beautiful movie. Are you as enthused but bewildered by this film as me and Mark both seem to be? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I'm the same as you, Jim. Um, this is the um, this is my introduction um, to the director. 
um, and his film work. Uh, I loved it. Sort of um, things that you've mentioned so far in terms of these coffins that are just strewn about anywhere. Um, there's this great um, sort of DJ news presenter, almost like hype man that's there constantly. That's a really sort of interesting aspect of it, whereby news is spread around the community through him you know speaking through a speaker that's sitting in the back of his car or maybe there's um the a couple of folk who live just outside the town who as they see strangers or, or something odd someone coming in they'll send a little voice note and that spreads around the town so something kind of i don't necessarily know what that does like why it's great but it just it creates a real sense of a unique space a really unique point in time it, the film from what i gather is meant to be sort of set a little bit in the future um i don't know how necessary that is i guess there are there's technology involved that perhaps is why they feel the need to sort of establish that but otherwise it could kind of really be whenever wherever yeah so i i also love this film um i mean it is batshit i mean let's not let's not beat around the bush here it is a supremely strange film but what i liked about it is it's one of these films where i didn't really feel like it was being weird for weird's sake i do feel like there is something behind each of these elements in particular, so we're introduced at first to obviously the cit the citizens of Bakurau, right, the town. But now some reviews have gone into kind of explicitly where the film goes from here. I'm not going to do that because I think it would be quite good to go in, you know, reasonably fresh. But needless to say, there is a set of characters introduced who are not local. They they are from outside Brazil, I think they're a mix of nationalities, but primarily American, who then begin to serve as our antagonists. And it's very interesting the way the character dynamics work with them in terms of how we observe the interactions that Mark has spoken about with the citizens of Baccarat and how it's kind of, you know, quite harmonious or at least kind of, you know, it's very, you know, everybody gets along compared to the interactions of these antagonist characters. And both in terms of just the way that these characters carry themselves and the way that they interact with the citizens, because needless to say, they do end up interacting with them in not particularly wholesome ways, let's say. Um, and basically, there's this film accelerates into, you know, quite quite high levels of violence. I think and, uh, again, I, I, it's very hard to talk about this without explicit spoilers. But I think it's it's fair to say there are antagonists and there is violence involved. And I think the different things that are woven into this story with those characters and why they're there, the way they interact with one another, and even kind of the tools and props that they use to go about uh you know their purposes within the story it's really interesting and i think there is a lot there i feel like i saw this film several days ago and i feel like i'm still unpicking it uh and it's really going to benefit from a second viewing it's worth saying that the the cast are absolutely superb um on the antagonist side there's udo kier who kind of like plays a german who is heading up this group of people absolutely superb um as you might expect and the reason i'm saying that you know it's an antagonist group is not a spoiler is generally his presence in a film is rarely a um rarely an announcement of you know some sort of warm fuzzy uh result heading the film's way so i was wondering what how you found um the characters because i i, I find them absolutely superb you could find it a little bit uh caricaturish but i didn't and I'd even argue that even if you did, I think that actually kind of serves the purpose of this film. It's a very amped up film. It's not a naturalistic one by any stretch of the imagination. And for me, it really got me involved and hooked into what was happening on screen. Uh, yeah, in terms of the characters for the um, townspeople, I think, you know, that they're not, there's not a huge amount of backstory given to a lot of the characters and it is like a really big sort of ensemble like mark said it's a community um and i think the the most successful thing that's done amongst those characters is building that sense of community and that sense of connection so there's not really that individualism and, and there are a few sort of standout 
moments for some of the characters. So um, like Dominga, um, who we mentioned earlier, who um, is probably one of the more eccentric people within the town. Uh, and the uh, character Lunga, who um, at the beginning of the film is actually not present, but they, they sort of reach out to him and, and bring him in towards the uh, latter half of the film. They really sort of stand out as being almost useful sort of tools in how the story is going to play play out um but the you know the moments in the beginning the the characters themselves they all sort of they move as one the the scene we mentioned of the suitcase being put, put, passed around they're all standing there quite close and packed in and they they all hang out in that town um together and it, it 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 sort of does something to to create that that sense that you maybe get in um oh, it's Oliver Stone's U turn, um where a, a sort of a stranger comes to town and that town is w- sort of odd and offbeat and uncanny and but they they all kind of share a sense of they know each other and they can almost communicate without having to say anything, um so I, I mean I, I really appreciate the 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 community um ensemble cast. And that and, and that community ethos is actually mirrored in the narrative of the movie as well, and in point of view, because um, there isn't. Although Bar, although um, Teresa is kind of our identification character for the most part, um, she's not in it for all that much in the film. We do shift a lot uh, around a lot, and that speaks to that thing about this, the community that matters more than any one person in it. Um, although there are, and I want to I want to single out a few of them because they're so joyous. Um, there's a kind of bard who's always plucking on the. <laughs> On his, on his electric guitar, um, and then uh, when two tourists come to visit, kind of improvising some dog roll for them, which is just delightful. Um, and I, I think I, I think we should also talk about the way in which the film, as in the director's film, I should say this is co-directed. It's not just Kleber Mendonça Filho; it's Juliano Dornels, who was a production designer on the previous two movies, and his um, I think his debut single solo debut features. Yeah, upcoming soon this film was inevitably going to be seen as a film of, in reaction to the election of Jair Bolsonaro um, not that the director's other two films to date haven't been extremely engaged and political they are but they were just markedly for different periods whereas this one even though it was in development before Bolsonaro was elected it's definitely going to be seen as a, de- a reaction to that yeah, there's definitely there's definitely a distrust of authority figures in this film. There, there's a there's a mayor character who's treated with quite high levels of disdain. Johnny M, who's a really repellent creature, he um, I think you should distrust anyone that comes with um, a, a truck with their a video on repeat of them just standing looking swift. Um, yeah, he's he's dispatched rather brilliantly by the um, just the <laughs> increasing volume of. Uh, of the the noise against them um we'd say that um a couple of references are kind of embedded in the film in very entertaining ways the school is named jao carpentiero because uh you'll also notice john carpenter's score in the in the background here the um the music is obviously heavily indebted to carpenter because it lifts from one of his movies called night um also just want to talk about the simple pleasure of the editing in this because i love the editing in this um there are a lot of those lovely little dissolves and lot like lap dissolves which are my favorite thing in film i think so uh, there's that i was i was i actually the 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 editing the way the film's put together i actually kind of got a graphic novel feel from it almost like in terms of it because there's a lot of the the transitions between scenes are invariably particularly as the film progresses that they're they're screen wipes you know it wipes from top to bottom or side to side and then there was at least one um, you know, split diopter shot is kind of you know some you know uh, vehicles rumble into town, and I think that really worked quite beautifully with the rather insane levels of violence that this film actually gets to, um, and I think it worked really well with the the stuff we've spoken about about the way the people interact and the tone. I think it was pitched absolutely perfectly because it, you could find this film very strange indeed i do find it very strange but the way that it's put together and the way that it's shot and edited i think actually works really quite beautifully with that as the thing we were mentioning earlier about the tone change um it's kind of beautifully announced by the very instant that udo Kier walks through the door you think oh shit it's changing now <laughs> he's he's not gonna join in the happy community vibes here 
Okay, well, I, I think we'll leave it there for Baccarat. I think that's a very healthy recommendation from us. So as far as I'm aware, I think it's playing at the Glasgow Film Festival on the 3rd and the 5th of March. Uh, and then it will be coming to some cinemas. I think it's getting a reasonably limited release on the 13th of March. But on the same day, as we said, it will be available on Mubi. So if you have a subscription to that, you'll be able to see it. But also they do a free trial. So good excuse to break open that free trial if you haven't already.